Action activate. Everybody, look! I didn't. I did that so wrong. I don't care. I'm Gazbot. This is Action Activate. With me, as always, it is I. It is the big dog. Even though you saw a preview of what we're reviewing today, which oh. is Mystic Force Dark Wish Part Three, what we really should be talking about is how you got that clip of Jason Narvi. Did you like interview him or something? Well, yes. I can't get this up. <laughs> There's no cool way to do that. Uh, yeah, well, we did Power Morphicon. We, there's a bunch of Power Morphicon videos up. This is the first new review we've done since Power Morphicon 2024. When we were there, we did a ton of interviews. I think I did eight and you did two. Um, so I did better. But uh, Jason it, Narvi, It's the quality over the quantity, all right? Maybe so, maybe so. So we have one with Zenith Films that's already up. Uh, and we have one with Jason Narvi, which, which uh, just got put up. That's where that shout out came from. We have more coming. I'll probably put them up once every week or so and until the end of time. Um, speaking of shout outs for Power Morph Con, since we're here, everybody listening to us and not watching, I hope you're enjoying your run or your bike or whatever cardio you're doing. If you're part of the Morph and Time Fitness community working out, yeah. and if you're not, uh, welcome anyway. Um, you know Mystic what? I'm Force. gonna do another opening just because you said that. I'm doing it, I don't care. Hey, I'm Kevin with Morph and Time Fitness. And if you need a great podcast to listen to when you're working out, it's time to download Action Activate. What a guy. Finally got to meet him in person. Kevin, shout out to you. Uh, always great hanging out. The definition of a Southern gentleman. Yeah, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. But enough enough talk about friends and good times and trips and all that. We're here to review a very serious thing, and that is Power Rangers Missing Force Dark Wish Part 3. Which is actually episode 20 of season – it says season 14. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that's true. I don't know if it is or not. Sure, whatever. Um, th this um, – Okay, first, do, I'm going to give my first impression. I'm going to ask you. Please. Uh, I watched this, I think, uh, either part one or part two, I said I watched with my mom, who hasn't watched Power Rangers since the 90s. Um, and I watched this with Tech Advisor Azuki and my mom, both of whom have never seen Mystic Force. Um, uh, Tech Advisor Azuki had seen more Power Rangers in general, but not this one. And uh, the, the, the comment I was getting is like, man, there's a lot of characters in this show. Wow, what's go? who's that? Like, there's a lot. And they're not wrong. <laughs> not wrong. But how I felt was the first half of this episode, I loved it. And I was like, I love this three-part storyline. It's great. Um, and I was thinking how, like, there's certain tropes that always get me. And, like, one of them is, you know, hey, we don't have powers, but we're going to fight on anyway. Whether that's Power Rangers, Spider-Man, whoever. It's like, this is why they're heroes. And I also like post-apocalyptic worlds, and we got that too. And so, like, a lot of good stuff. And I'm like, I, I just love this whole storyline, and it's a lot of fun, and, and I'm really into it. Uh, and then they they prove themselves and like, but then about halfway through, I felt like that's the end of the episode. But it it was like very Return of the King, like it just keeps going more and and, and by the end of the episode, I'm like, what is happening? They just keep piling more stuff. This feels like three episodes crammed into the last ten minutes. What are they doing? So that's how I feel. <laughs> I I overall enjoyed this episode, but um, I would describe this episode as it felt like a really bad finale. But thankfully, yes. it wasn't one. Yeah. I, 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 well, yes and no. I, I did say something like how it felt to me like it did feel like a finale. Um, up until they got their, like, the new powers. Mm -hmm. and, when, and when they got the new powers, it's like, okay, well, clearly this is like a mid season finale or a mini boss fight or whatever, because now that they have the new powers, they have to have, you know, however many more episodes to sell the new figures and the new powers and all that. But it, as a finale, it wasn't even that bad. Like I liked the end of this report storyline. It was like fine. Like I, I, I really had no issues with it. It just was weird that then it just went off into like three other directions instead of like, I think like they could have ended it there. And then next episode be like, okay, now that we got these new powers, what are we going to do yeah, for a three part story? It felt oddly rushed. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, that's it. That's it. It was, it, it was a three part story. It was a two and a half part story. 
Yeah. Because the first half of this episode was the end of that. And then the other 11 minutes was next season. I don't know what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. Um, seeing kind of the recap of everything. So uh, I don't know about you. The whole MacGuffin Magic Council I'm not a huge fan of. Did not mind it at all. Um, I I just I, – I agree with you. We're in the beginning. We're still in, you know, Dark Wish world. We show that they're real true rangers. Again, part one, hated how they – represented all these characters two and three awesome this is the team that i like made me like everybody even better Mm -hmm. um but i don't like how so much of this episode especially the back half was dictated by this council going yeah sure here's some more magic stuff here's why that didn't bother me as much well well, two reasons two things one again i'm just blinded by how much i like the storyline of the apocalyptic world and no powers not just just because of who i am but i think about it like i didn't see this as a kid but if I saw this as a kid, I'd be like, oh, what is are they, what are they gonna do? It's uh, oh no, like like it, I'd have that real sense of danger and like, oh no, he played music. Like I, I know myself back then, and it would have been just like very high stakes. Is are the magic McGuffins my favorite? No, but they don't bother me because we've seen many seasons that did way worse explaining where new powers come from to the point where they're just like, oh, look, we have powers for no reason. So this was like a three-part trial where first they're like, we're not going to give them their powers. Then they said, okay, well, we're giving their powers, but they haven't learned their lesson. Then they learned their lesson and then they get new powers. So is it flawless? Is it Shakespeare? Is it perfect? No. But for Power Rangers, I thought it was pretty good. I think if they just use the council to get the wish kind of reversed that was cool and then if they had a different line or two explaining how they got these different upgrades and powers i would have liked it better than oh these are new we're very fluent in how to use them but wait there's a mo-. like wait the one- are you complaining about rangers being fluent how to use powers that they've never had before because that has been happening every season since it started. here's why because when they first get them Everybody knows exactly what they're doing. And then they go, but wait, there's more. And they're like, there is either have them know everything or have them know nothing. You're playing both sides. And that's what I didn't like. You're talking about when they got the new Zords when they, cause it all had to do with that little dial staff that they had. They got, okay. So they get their new upgraded modes. I forget what it's called. The super mega mode, whatever. And mystic mode or something. Legendary mode. Legendary mode. I think. Yeah. And so, then, okay, this is when they get the regular powers back. Um, then with that, they get a new weapon, which is that little rotary phone staff thing. So your issue isn't that they know how to transform, that they know how to do all their stuff already. It's that they're like, ooh, let's see what number one does. Let's see them like that's that's your issue. No, they knew what number one and two did. They didn't go, I wonder what this does. They just everything they knew inherently, fine. If they know everything inherently, that's fine. Then mm-hmm. they go. But wait, you can summon Zords. They're like, we can? Like, I I didn't like the inconsistency. Either they know nothing and they're learning on the fly, or they know everything and we're just assuming they know it because they're magicians. I guess I assume they know everything. And you're right. That is inconsistent. Um, That's what I like. Similar to my critique in episode one. If they're always goons, I don't have to love it, but it's consistent. If you make them a goon for no reason, just to show that they're not a goon, that's inconsistent. Yeah, and I guess I guess it didn't stand out to me as much at the time, but you're 100% right. I'll give you an ninja steal for that. Thank but, you. Um, I think the reason, like, like, in universe, it makes no sense. Out of universe, I think it's twofold. One, to give the mentor something to do. Like, to tell, hey, there's more you don't know. I'm the wise one. And B, to create a sense of excitement and drama for the kids watching. Like, new Zords? Whoa! Whereas if they just like, oh, by the way, who cares? You know, so in universe, it doesn't make sense. But in the real world, I could kind of understand why they'd make that distinction. But also, to that same point, I feel like a thing to make the mentors crazy relevant. If you had Daggeron, who just came back as the Wish, and you had Udana there, they go, oh my gosh, the legendary powers. We haven't seen these in... A thousand years, Rangers use mode one on the dial to, you know, use a yeah. super some a, a line yeah. takes less than ten seconds. I agree. I agree. Yeah. That would have been a better way to do it. Yeah. But uh, and this comes back to like when did it pick, when did it not pick, and whatever. Like you're you're not wrong. I'm not saying that. But 
at, uh, at this point in the episode, I was still just really enjoying it. I was like, this is great. And like, there are things that could be better and aren't perfect, but I was just like, I, I, I was just happy. And I was thinking how like this three part storyline, cause there've been parts of this season I've liked and not liked. And I think overall I've liked it more than you, but my enthusiasm had been waning, you know, and it really was like this. I don't know what happens after this, but like, if it continues at this level, like there's a lot of people that like mystic force. Like this is yeah. an underrated season. And boy, I'm glad you're doing it. Like these episodes make me understand why. Yeah. You know, like, so I was just thinking like, yeah, okay, maybe, but like, I, I, this is great. And this fight scene was great. I thank you. I was going to bring up as a huge positive. When I was watching the both unmore fight and the more fight, I was like, this is a really long fight. Like yeah. I go back, like just manually like, scroll to like yeah. three minutes okay Th like th the three minute mark okay so yeah. they're fighting t before three minutes they're like two minutes 50 seconds in two minutes of civilian 30 fight, seconds yeah. in something like that and then just like hover over before they get their new mode how long this fight is because it's all fight keep going keep well, going keep going to the, to the but you know what i mean just yes. just just keep going there, that's like a footnote it's a pause yeah. while everybody's still it's fighting like two minutes of civilian fight and then it's another at, okay. at five minute mark. We'll five. we'll use that as a little designator. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Go 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 go. Power Rangers. Go 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 go. Yeah, there's that it little goes, side note. Okay, so yeah, there's three, right three right. minutes of fight. Yeah, yeah. There, that, that's it's a lot. It's a lot. Before, and a lot of it is before, before like all this other stuff. It's just yeah. action. So much action. Yeah, yeah. Um. Also, with the wish, uh, from what's her name, who I don't remember. Um. Oh, oh and this it also yes. answered a question from a previous review. Yes, they're two different people: the crazy bat lady and the person who That's is a spy in the shop. Yes, it was confirmed. I think by uh, uh, Matt Moniker. Uh, yeah, if not then someone else, but I think it was Matt uh, that it is her daughter. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, just so much action. I did like that wish. How it was like wasted. It did feel organic, even though I knew it was going to be. Right. something along those lines in a joke it it didn't feel as forced as some other jokes we've had not only in all power rangers but like this season specifically so Agreed. i appreciated Agreed. how this was executed yeah. yeah and it was believable with that character that she would make that mistake i have thank you go go here i have a huge gripe at eight minutes and 47 seconds i'm gonna need you to put closed captioning on because there's just on. an uh, there's an untruth that is presented right here that I just cannot stand for. Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> I know where you're going with this. I, I just need to see the line. Here they it's come not on close the captioning. What the heck? I thought it was. I just turned it on. I thought no, I, I can't see any of them. Hold on. I Try that. that. Let's see. Maybe I'm not letting it play long enough. Okay, let me just risk the copyright. No, all right, we're gonna have to go back. Let's let's just hear the audio if we're gonna risk it. Okay. At 45, 845 is when we're gonna play it. Oh now I can see it. Okay. Here we go. All right, here we go. I can't hear it. Dang it. I know you could hear it. We can't hear it on our side. Oh, I'm like, there you go. We heard it. But I don't know why the closed captions are coming on. This is... This is very action activate. We're doing this setup for you a bit. What? I know why it's not working. Because I have it set through the streaming so that sound won't go through because we kept getting copyright strikes when we try to do stuff like this. Got so it. I protected us from ourselves in the past. Well, now, if, you, if you could do... So much as to tell everyone at home what at eight minutes forty nine seconds this says. Can you see the the? Uh, the I can now, but when he was talking, I couldn't. Okay. So I'm just going to need okay. you to tell everybody he, he at jumps, home. He jumps in. I'll even turn the sound for me. So he jumps in to get. I'll. I'll I hear it. You know, I'm going to act it out. Here we go. The Rangers are back. Firewood is of no use to us now. Let's tear it down. And then she puts a little circle, and he jumps in, and he gets enlarged, and he goes, Whoa! Now I'm the big dog. I need a one-shot. Okay. Uh, hold on. 
You're getting it. You're getting it. There's only one big dog here, and it's not you, Fido. That was all. Okay. <laughs> I, oh, I was so literally – So little payoff. I know. I'm so sorry, everyone. No, 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 no. You had to do it. You were right to do it, but with the technology messing with us. The only notes I have for this episode are 8 minutes, 49 seconds, and to bring that up. So. I was wondering how you were so specific about that time code. Yeah, but I thought that was funny. I did chuckle to myself. Um, Agreed. Uh, but overall, um, going back to actually reviewing it, um, I forget the name of these four like mini bosses that they are uh, fighting monsters, Is that something called? like that. Um, again, like they, I can't tell if we should think they're like really strong or not at all. Like it's it very inconsistent because they wiped two of them out when they first got introduced. And in this episode, they wipe another one out, but they're keeping one around still. It's like, what? I, you know. Yeah. yeah. And they blew them up, but then they didn't. And... It's yeah, the, I don't something get it. Beast. I, and we, you know what? We said this last time, and I remember. I think it's I Berserker it. Beast. It's definitely be- something Beasts. Void yeah. Beast? Berserker Beast? And people told us, they're probably yelling at us right now because they told us in the comments. Yeah. And, and we forget again. And you know what my response is? Words have no meaning on a planet under it's the, the Cape of War. War. So uh, we, uh, I do like Void Knight once again being like, I feel like you betrayed me. And, oh, I didn't do anything, you know. Yeah. And then he's like, I totally betrayed him, guys. <laughs> I, I'm <laughs> currently betraying him. Hey, pop on out here, Fido. We're going to keep betraying him right now. So, yeah. um, And this yeah, is where they... they yeah, it's not even halfway through the episode. It's like, man, what a what a dark wish that was. Am I right? Glad yeah, that's it feels, over. It feels like, oh, barbarian beasts. There it is, barbarian yeah. beasts. It feels like the ending. Like it was so strong. There's such good fights. They wrapped everything up. Like they they learned their lesson. And I feel like it should have ended here. And if not, maybe right when they're they're getting beat by the barbarian beasts. Right, they're they're getting their yeah. butts kicked. And maybe like. Don't let them get their powers yet and be like, do 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 what happens next week or right when they get their powers. Either one of those would have been an acceptable ending. The fact that everything everything that happens after they lose this fight and get their new powers is just like – There is much. one huge benefit of this fight and it's that Korag comes in and goes, hey, I got this. Yeah, I agree. How about two nights? Yeah. There it is. Uh, yeah, cool Kor- Korag's awesome. Still – in the top five Ranger designs of all time, I'm just going to be bold and say it. The more I see him on screen, the more I'm like, this is just almost unmatched. It's just so dang striking. It's so, here's my, it's very good. I don't know if you could technically call it a Ranger design since he's not one of the team, you know, but I understand it is in that ballpark, but it's almost like he looks like a, a, a common rider or something. It's almost. Yeah. So, because the armor is almost so far removed from what we think of as Sentai that, like, I almost don't want to count it because it, it's so different, you know? Yeah, but it d- is. Wait, awesome. wait, does he have a wand, though, like they do? Not that I'm aware of. Oh, I thought he did. He has a sword and a shield. Okay. I mean, he certainly has a magic looking, you know, look about him. But he I can do just... magic. Anyways, I'm counting him as a ranger. Okay. An evil ranger, similar to Void Knight. But uh, I still think. Uh, was it? It wasn't Sub Zero, was it? It was uh, below. fifty below. That coolest one of the four, like hands down. Yeah, they let the ugliest one live the longest. I know, and Fancy and see the most egregious line I've ever heard in a Power Ranger episode. <laughs> but you know, that's neither here nor there. Oh, this is when they finally take responsibility. The easy way is not, and they're like, "Boom, here you go." Yeah, and they're like, "Da da da da." We get fins and like shoulder pads but we lose our capes i was bummed they lose their capes yeah i i knew you would be so the thing i've known about these designs just through toys and watching casually back in the day for like ever but what i will say is i really liked them in this like kind of reveal for each ranger i love the whether intentional or not homage to the dragon shield from mighty morphin that they all All have now um, I, don't, I, just, I don't mind that armor piece. I just feel like it could sell the cape. Kind of like similar to what they did in, in Cosmic Fury where uh, they had the um, – what was yeah. the name of that ranger? It was not – Oh, the, uh, the Zenith? Cast. Zenith ranger. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I didn't love the, the costume like exactly how they did it, but the concept I liked, the cape underneath the shield. I, I feel like if they had a cape, it would look way too much like Common Rider Wizard. 
Okay, but you don't mind Void Knight looking like a common rider? No, because he just stands on his own and he's a boss. <laughs> okay, he becomes the centaur. Like he he could do no wrong. Yeah, they just look incomplete to me here. It looks like they need something else. Um, out of all these helmet variations, which one's your favorite? Um, either pink or blue. How about you? Interesting. Uh, either green or oh, better look at maybe blue also. I need to see blue again. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I get blue's got the cool fin. Blue's blue's really cool. Blue's the only one with like one piece where everybody has like kind yeah. of fit. Yeah, I'd probably say blue just because it's the most unique. But pink were I mean they all work for the animal they're supposed I've to be. I've seen red the most, so I feel like I like his the least. Um it's not my taste, but it works. It is no, exactly no, no. They all work. I'm just saying, like out of the the best. Yeah, you know, green think, looks the goofiest, which makes me kind of like it more. I think pink. I I, I do think because it's like the butterfly, but they kind of look like aerodynamic like fair. fins. Fair. Yeah, I think pink. But the overall, very cool power up design. I like it. I agree. My only complaint is that we lose the capes. That's my only complaint. Yeah. Um, what do you think of the uh, rotary phone as the ancient powers versus the cell phone? I. I, I like it. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, as the only person in this uh, group who has owned the Zord that we're going to see in a bit, does it make you like the Zord less, the same, or more? Uh, it it kind of made me like it more and less at the same time because I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Because, like, I don't have any of the other Mystic Zord uh, for Zords. I have that one. And I got it having never seen it, just like, oh, it's this cool motorized Zord. And I got it for a good price years ago. Yeah, and I was like, I completely forgot because I, I think of it as a robot in my collection, not a character from a show. Like it, I just did. So when it showed up, I'm like, oh wait, this is the one I have, and I got excited. What I didn't like was how it was like mostly not great CGI, and maybe it was good for the time, whatever. But like, I liked it more when it turned into the suit, and it had like the flaming wings and stuff. But then I was like, my toy doesn't really look that good. It doesn't in comparison. Doesn't. That was my first thought. Yeah, um, what I liked, though, is the gimmick of the toy, which is why I bought it, is it's motorized, and so the lion kind of charges down this thing, and it hits, like, the the bird, which is sort of like a ring, and, it's, and it turns into the Zord, and then sort of, like, walks forward and has a little spinning thing. So the fact that that's exactly what happened in the show I thought was really cool, the way it, it transformed like that. Yeah. Um, so I was excited to see my Zord in the show. I was excited to see the transformation be exactly like the transformation gimmick. And I think if I was a kid, it'd be done. Just that's awesome, period. But as an adult collector who's seen a lot of stuff, I'm like, I now want to get rid of this and get like a legacy, a, a soul Chogokin, some kind of version of that with those fire wings. Like I, I'd rather have that now. Um, when they do actually have the Zord be in action in a little bit, it really reminded me like that it feels semi out of place in this season and that it should be like a Jungle Fury Zord. Because of the animals? And just because of like the way that it moves. Like we'll we'll see it in a bit. Yeah, I don't totally understand this of... underworld plot that people can go in and out whenever they please, but whatever. I um, also was disappointed by this because again, it was like, oh, here's this new character. He's powering up again, like 50 things. Are and like, we're going to put your soul energy into it. And I thought it was going to be like this battery. We're like, oh, for the next 10 episodes, every you know, villain Same. that fails powers it up. But it's like, nope, it's here. We're fighting it, and it's over. I'm like, what? And Dennis is- was like, what? The crystal ball told me there's this netherworld. Let me take the train. Choo-choo. Let me, yeah. let me go, let me go down like they there. They introduced this whole new plot. And they introduced it and resolved it. And like the in back a minute end of- and a half. Yeah, it was like a C plot. It was weird. And like it looked interesting. It blasts yeah. reality. Like, whoa, what is happening? And then it's just like over. It's so weird. And this yeah, is them, them going back to their civilian forms. I know it's all Sentai stuff, but that was also weird to me. Well, they thought the fight was over. <laughs> then why did they just demorph completely? Oh, no, you said civilian forms. You mean their basic forms? Oh, sorry, base forms, not civilian. Um Head cannon is that it burns more energy to be in the, the super form. That like, is you watching Dragon Ball Z too much. So <laughs> I don't watch that much Dragon Ball Z, but yeah, okay. <laughs> but uh yeah, right here they find out, oh, there's a three and a four mode. I thought it was cool that uh they all understand. four combined into the lion. That was cool, but I didn't understand like one was like individual attack, two was group attack. Three was what? And then four was Mega. Turn into the Zords, and I think four was 
Megazord. So if they just did three, they'd stay separate. Probably. Then what I don't like is that we skipped three. Like, why didn't we enjoy three? Because we're putting 15 new plot points in the last six minutes of an episode. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. man. Um, that, that, the Phoenix is cool with, like, the actual fiery wings. Yeah. Like, I liked how he's, like, shooting the fiery. Like, yeah. And, the, and what is this Zord? Who cares? It's about to be gone. Spoiler alert. It made it seem like it was the new big thing. And it's also weird because it was the CGI Zords fighting a suit Zord, which is, like, the worst way to do it. Like, make yeah. them all CGI or not. It, it, like, it just felt weird. Um, but this combination was unnecessary and awesome. Yeah. Like, I, and like I said, it's exactly the toy combines. Um, but then when it became this, I like, like this right a lot. here, that looks like an ancient jungle fury Zord. The way it's just like, huh, or like a. I mean, it also, you know, it also reminds force. me of Wild Force. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the Animus or whatever. But I like it. I think it looks cool. I love the headpiece and the wings. Yeah. Like, I would love a high quality figure that that has like translucent fire you could clip on and stuff. Like, yeah, like that's awesome. Yeah. That's. That looks so cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah very I'm different from what you got. Fire. What's it, that? it almost, I said very different than what you got. Yeah. But also in this post specifically, it looks like a Zord from like 15 years before Mighty Morphin. Yes, I could see that. Like just like a true, just for Japan, Sentai. Yeah. That they didn't care about the rest of the world. And it's like from folklore and something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it looks very classic. Yeah. And you know what it reminds me of? There's a uh, anime... Uh, Oh, what was it called? Die. It was the what? Do you know the story about Voltron? How Voltron wasn't supposed to come to America? Uh, maybe, but remind there, all of us. There, back in like the seventies and eighties, when when Americans were like going to Japan and seeing stuff and going, "Oh, we want to buy this and bring it back." There was somebody that went there and wanted to get one, and they said, "Oh, the Lion Robot one is what they said." And so lines got crossed and the rights were purchased to Go Lion, which is what we know as the Oh, yeah, it does look like Go Lion. But there was another one that uh, had literally had a lion on its chest. Like, I, know, I know exactly what you're talking about. And uh, I'm blanking on the name of it, but that's what they meant to buy. I think it is Go Lion. Let me look. No, Go Lion is Voltron. It's um, – yeah, look it up. I can't remember the name, but but yeah, they go lion is is Voltron, and so they said they wanted the lion one, not realizing there was another lion one, and so like we got a different one. But this looks like the one they intended on buying. Diamos? No, that's not right. Uh, Daltinos? Daltanus. 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 Yeah, yes. it does look like Daltanus. That's what this reminds me of. Which again, you're right. It'd be like 70s or 80s, which would be Sentai pre Mighty Morphin era Z Ranger. So. Yeah, but I'm into it. I'm into it. It's cool looking. I I would like. Yeah, it. the ch the chest is like a one for one with it. Yeah. Like I'm looking right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's probably an homage because this was like you know 20 years later. So why not? You know, it's, it's yeah. part of the culture. But like I and said, like, uh, th from a design perspective, everything about it like it's cool. It invoked good emotions. It looks classic because these are ancient powers. They have a rotary phone. Everything about it, I think, was cool. Agreed. The yeah. only thing I don't like about it is that it's part of this weird super fast truncated back end where they had like three plot lines introduced and resolved immediately. I and also then, love how he went out of his way to said, I am coming to kick your butt later. <laughs> yes. And it's consistent though. Going back to consistency. He said the same thing to uh Kelson's character who I'm blanking on. We're like, just yeah. so you know, we're done here. Like he's, he's all about honor. He is oh, the, the most consistent character of the entire series. Um, also record store guy whose name I forget. All right, it's tied. <laughs> He's but, the uh, most consistent character with powers. Yes, and there that has an arc. He has an arc. This guy hey, right there's the thumbnail. You found it. <laughs> Dark Wish Part Three. Good. Um, but yeah, like overall, um, it was good. Uh, I love how our biggest critique is you put too much good stuff in a short period of time. Yeah, which is weird because there's so many episodes that we watched previously where like nothing's happening yeah. and like, who cares? And then it's like, yeah, it, the whole Dark Wish storyline I like a lot. I think episode two was the best of the three. Um, but I think two had the best story. Three was the most aesthetically pleasing to watch for obvious reasons. Three was the most exciting. And as much as I'm complaining about the second half, like you said, it's I would much rather that than have something boring or yeah. stupid or goofy. It just felt like it could have been two or three episodes in that. In that. So I, and I also, dislike. Oh, go for it. I'm sorry. I was saying, it makes me excited and nervous to see what comes next because yeah. either – they wasted a bunch of good stuff so that they can have a story about, oops, I forgot your anniversary, 
or there's so much cool stuff coming up that they just had to get that out of the way, you know, like, so let's see. Uh, I dislike part one less because of part two and three now. Okay, good. So retroactively that review, everything I said is the same. I never make mistakes and everything I say is written in stone. Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, but, I do think if somebody, having not finished the season, obviously, if somebody was like, I'm interested in Mystic Force, I'd be like, yeah, this is a good three-parter. Just check this out. This is a good you know, jumping yeah. out point. Um, yeah, because then if the Rangers are lazy and seem goofy in part one, there's nothing to show you that they've grown. So it's, yeah. Um, not to put more work on your plate, but if you ever feel like you just want a small project to do, you can try to get that sound bite for later of I am the big dog now. You know, and that's we, something you can do, right? I have to learn so many things. Do, do you have an iPhone? Oh, no. Okay, we have a phone. That's fine. <laughs> I love how you're like, you do you have the easy button? I do not. Well, well, well I, can, I can walk you through it step by step if you have an iPhone. You don't even need to do it like and I'm sure you could do it on Android or whatever. You know how to screen record, right? No. Everybody's learning how inept I am at technology in real time. Okay, you know what? Never mind. I'm, you're right. You're right. You can't do it. <laughs> Until we see what episode is next, I have been the big dog. Ah, uh, Gazbot, and, and to the power. Boom. See y'all later. Oh, too funny. Um. I haven't looked at anything for the next episode, so I am going in 100% fresh, which is exciting. Same. Same. I, I, are we going to... I mean, do you think the next episode we post is going to be the next episode of Mystic Force, or is it going to be the finishing up of Rogue Loser? I could, I could see us doing a thing, since yeah. I'm going to see you physically in person next week. That, That's right. Um, we see each other in person twice like when we hadn't seen each other in like a year and a half or whatever. Exactly. It's, it's, it's wow. crazy. I could see us doing a thing where either that and or the loser ranger wrap up will happen from us sitting on my couch, watching it in real time and then recording after on a tripod. We said this about when we went to PMC, but I think the chances of it happening are much higher with this. Oh, show. Significantly higher. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Night and day different. <laughs> All right. Well, until then, bye everybody. Toodles.